And now a little story from the apple seed. Once there was a prince. He was a mountain prince. He lived on a farm on a grange, which is an old word for farm. And the only reason I use it is because it rhymes with range. So he lived on a grange on a mountain range. And this particular mountain prince wanted to get married. He wanted to marry a princess, but he didn't want to marry any old princess. He wanted to marry a mountain princess. And the problem was there weren't any mountain princesses in the general vicinity. So he said to his mama, he said, mama, I'm gonna go out in all the world. He lives with his mama in this scenario, which I think explains a few things. <laughs> But he said to his mama, he said, Mama, I'm going to go out into the world. I'm going to go to all the mountain ranges in all the world, see if I can't find me a real mountain princess. So he set out, and he hiked the Himalayas, and he cruised the Caucasus. He ascended the Alps and the Appalachians. He roamed through the Rockies. He went to the Sierras <laughs> to see if there were any ladies with tiaras. And then he went to Glass Mountain to see if anybody had one shoe. Uh, <laughs> But he couldn't find any real mountain princesses. Now, he met a couple ladies who said they were princesses, but he wasn't sure if they were really princesses, because let's face it, princess costumes just aren't that expensive. Uh, <laughs> so he went home, and he said to his mama, he said, Mama, I couldn't find me no real mountain princess. He said, I met a couple ladies who said they were princesses, but I think they might have been frauds. He said, now I kissed some of those frauds <laughs> to see if they would turn into princesses. <laughs> And his mama said, don't kiss frauds, you'll get warts. And so that night there was a terrible storm. There was thunder and lightning and a hurricane and an earthquake and a tsunami and all manner of whatnot. And in the midst of that, there was a knock at the front door. And because this is a story, when the prince opened the door, there standing on the stoop was three beautiful prim prime princesses. And he was so excited until they said, trick or treat. And then he was like, oh, shucks. But... <laughs> The next morning, he was doing some work in the field, and it was a beautiful day, and he saw a woman coming down the road, and she was wearing hiking boots and a calico dress, and her hair was a mess, and she said, Howdy, I'm a real mountain princess. Well, he didn't know if she was a real princess or not, because he didn't know if real princesses wore hiking boots and calico dresses with their hair in a mess, but she did have a sash <laughs> that said mountain princess, so he thought, <laughs> maybe. And... Uh, he took her home to his mama. He said, Mama, this here lady says she's a real mountain princess. Well, the mama wasn't sure either. So she took the son to the side and she said, Listen, I don't know if she's a real princess. We're going to have to test her. This is what I want you to do. She said, I want you to take 20 mattresses and I want you to pile them up on the back of your pickup truck. <laughs> And when it comes time for bed, we'll have her sleep on top of them mattresses. And if she don't notice that she's sleeping on a pickup truck, we'll know that she's a real mountain princess. And the son said, okay, mom, we're brainstorming, so no bad ideas. But a couple of things. One, we ain't got 20 mattresses. He said, we got three mattresses, an air mattress, and one of them blow-up raft things. And the mama said, use what you got. And then he said, how is she not going to notice the pickup truck? He said, I bought that pickup truck specifically so princesses would notice me. And the mama said, how's that working for you? <laughs> but she thought about it, and then she said, dust ruffle. And so that night when it came time for bed, the prince said, oh, it's time for bed. Mama, let me show you. Or, uh, he said, oh, it's time for bed. Princess, can, you can edit that. Uh, <laughs> He said, let me show you where you will be sleeping. He said that to the princess, not to the mom. I'm trying to be clear here. So we're just going to start that. Oh, uh, let me show you where you'll be sleeping. And so he took the princess out the front door, across the driveway. He said, it's up this ladder, top of that pile of mattresses. Nothing weird about that. And so... <laughs> The princess climbed up, and when she was good and asleep, the mama gave the keys to the truck to the son, and that is not a sentence you want to try and diagram. And she said, I want you to take this truck, start the truck, and you drive. And you drive uphill, and you drive downhill. And you go on windy roads, and you go on bumpy roads. And if she don't notice that she's sleeping on a pickup truck, we'll know that she's a real mountain princess. And the son said, okay, mama, just one problem with that. He said, if I go on a bumpy road, she's going to, ah, like that, and I don't want to marry a roadkill princess. <laughs> now, I feel like I should pause here for just a moment to tell you that in the great state of West Virginia, from where I hail, uh, our state legislature, uh, maybe a decade ago, decided that it would be a perfectly reasonable thing to make eating roadkill legal and... <laughs> 
As a result of that, the culinary event of the year in West Virginia is in Marlinton. It is the Roadkill Cook-Off. <laughs> and as part of those festivities, there's a beauty contest, and some lucky young woman gets named Miss Roadkill. <laughs> But that's only my second favorite beauty contest in West Virginia. In Bridgeport, West Virginia, they have the Benedum Oil and Gas Festival, and some even luckier young lady gets named Miss Oil and Gas. So, <laughs> the son said, if I hit a bump, she's gonna, and the mama said, clamp it. <laughs> it's the best Beverly Hillbilly joke you're gonna get. <laughs> And she took a big ribbon and she tied the princess to the back of the pickup truck and the son got in the truck and he drove uphill and he drove downhill and he went on windy roads and he went on bumpy roads. Uh, and this is a children's story, so there are obligatory puns and here they come. He put it in four-wheel drive so that he could ford a stream <laughs> and then he had to dodge a ram and then he drove across the tundra. And then... <laughs> He got drowsy, and drowsy driving is dangerous driving, so he headed home, and he parked the truck, and the princess was still snoring in a very unprincess-like manner. And the prince went in, and he went to sleep. And in the morning, he and his mom were eating breakfast, and the princess came in, and she said, Morning, how'd y'all sleep? And they, she, they said, We slept great, which was a lie, because they didn't have any mattresses. <laughs> But they said, how did you sleep? And she said, best night of sleep I ever had in my whole life. Dreamt I was riding on a bucking bronco all night long. And then they knew that she was a real mountain princess. And the prince and the princess got married. And they lived happily ever after. Sometimes in two-wheel drive. Sometimes in four-wheel drive. But they always managed to thrive. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for a little story from the Appleseed.